I'm perplexed. Um, he often said that slavery was wrong. In his will, he attempted to manumit a number of his slaves and also provide living expenses and, and monies to purchase lands in the Ohio country. And yet he owned hundreds of slaves. At times, he became an advocate and a protector of slavery, particularly during the Missouri Compromise uh, controversy. How do you sort this out with Randolph? Yeah, he's a very complicated figure uh, on this particular subject because he's not always consistent and um, sometimes is admirable and sometimes feels pretty gross. So as you said, he owned hundreds of people. He mostly inherited them. Records suggest that he didn't, once he owned the plantation, he didn't buy any more individuals because he was sort of intellectually uncomfortable with the institution. There's also evidence to suggest that he taught the people that he owned reading and writing and organized his plantation in a different way. He he sort of organized people into different units and gave them a lot of authority and autonomy over the economic production on that particular plot of land, which is quite unusual for Virginia and plantation slavery. Um, he he did think that slavery was not a great thing, and but but had real uncertainty about how to get rid of it, and recognized his own economic circumstances were completely interwoven with this institution. So he was one of the one of the ways that he thought the United States could get out of it was through the colonization process. So he was one of the co-founders of the American Colonization Society, which wanted to take manumitted formerly enslaved people and send them to a new nation in Africa called Liberia. And so Randolph was was part of this experiment. It obviously was a failed experiment. Um, as you said, later in his life, he did change his will a number of times to try and provide territory and funds for the enslaved people that he manumitted in his will, and that was going to be in the Ohio country. Ohio country is the whole Northwest Territory. It can be Illinois, yes. Wisconsin, Mich you know, the whole zone, but beginning with Ohio and Western Pennsylvania. Yeah, so the will basically specified that every adult over 40 would get 10 acres of land in, in this territory. And when he died in 1833, this was very much a contested will. A lot of his other heirs fought it. It wasn't sort of um, there wasn't a solution until 1846. So 13 years later, it was it was fought for that long. 383 people did, in fact, get their freedom. That's a huge number of people that he was able to manumit, huge. not right away, but eventually. I mean, th huge. there could be very few individuals who manumitted more enslaved people than did he. Correct. They didn't, however, end up getting any of the land or any of the money that had been promised to them. So... It was definitely a mixed bag.